tried to make it Sunday, but I got so damn depressed that I set my sights on Monday and I got myself undressed. I ain't ready for the altar, but I do agree there's times when a woman sure can be a friend of mine. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to PNW Athletics today. I am Rick Costello, Director of Athletics and the host for the show. I am so pleased to be joined by Madison Samples, the new PNW stunt coach. How are you today? Great, great. How are you, Rick? I am doing great. Raining outside, just like Oregon, right? Just like home, yes. <laughs> Madison joined us from Oregon about a month ago, and we're going to talk all about stunt. We also have our championship uh, ice hockey coach and student athletes to celebrate a little bit uh, the pride. We're rocking and rolling on Saturday night, bringing home the first GL CHL Ice Hockey Championship. Uh, Madison, let's go inside the pride to start. We have an opening segment here. Um, PNW Athletics is 21 sports, 450 student athletes, and we are in our seventh year of NCAA Division II. And today happens to be D2 Day, NCAA Division II Day. Uh, so a big shout out to our student athletes, coaches, for all the amazing things that they do, giving back to the community. Yeah, absolutely incredible. I'm so excited to be here, be a part of this Pride family, and just, yeah, bring, show everybody what Stunt is all about. <laughs> awesome. Uh, so all across the nation, NCA uh, will be celebrating Division Two Day. And uh, just uh, really uh, a thanks to the coaches and student athletes for all the amazing things they do here at Purdue Northwest. Champions in the classroom, on the fields of competition, and in the community. Uh, so our winter sports are starting to wind down, Madison. Uh, men's basketball had a big week last week. They had two dubs, a win against uh, uh, Davenport, and then their second win of the season versus Grand Valley. And you will soon learn when you sweep Grand Valley, that is big news. <laughs> I love it. They work very, very hard, and they are awesome student athletes for sure. Uh, women's basketball also had a win against Davenport uh, last week and took Grand Valley right to the uh, wire and a tough loss against the number two team in the nation. But really cool, Coach Courtney Locke and Natalie Jarrett uh, led the efforts for the department to celebrate Play for K Day, which is our cancer awareness event. Uh, there was many thrivers, survivors, and folks battling cancer that were out there, and it was great to honor them in their battle against cancer. Uh, Dash Shaw from our women's basketball team was GLIAC Player of the Week. So shout out to Dash Shaw and her amazing performance. The basketball teams end their season with three straight road games. We go to Parkside, then up to Lake State and Ferris State, and then we uh, look at the GLIAC tournament. So hoop season is heading towards March Madness. Uh, indoor track and field is at the GLIAC Championships this week at Saginaw Valley State. And again, our, our hockey team won the GLCL, uh, GL, Great Lakes Collegiate Hockey League Championship. They're number 11 in the country with a 29-6 and six record on the year. Go to Nationals in St. Louis on March 7th is the first game against Indiana University of Pennsylvania. I know you share an office suite with ice hockey, so you got to be pumped up. I am. And in Oregon, we don't have too much hockey. So it was actually my first ever time watching a hockey game coming here. And it was amazing. We absolutely loved it. They are, they're pretty awesome. <laughs> it's a very physical sport, isn't yes. it? Yes. <laughs> uh, so again, uh, March 7th in St. Louis, the Pride take on Indiana University of Pennsylvania for the first round of the ACHA National Tournament. Esports also brought home a, uh, a trophy over the weekend. They won League of Legends, the GLIAC Championship for Esports. Our uh, Esporters won the League of Legends Champion. So that is our seventh championship, Madison, wow. in the last year. So uh, the pride are en fuego. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> 
All right, uh, so softball, our spring sports are getting rolling here. Softball uh, is 5-3, and three, two tournaments under their belt. Uh, and Kylie Duggan, a freshman, was player of the week. So congrats to Kylie and Coach Tristan Zink. Uh, baseball has, uh, will open their season this weekend in Kentucky. Uh, and then a big welcome back to Sal Hepper, our new tennis coach. She was formerly an assistant coach. She's also in the party pit in the <laughs> office suite there. Uh, coach Hepper is uh, back with the prime. Yeah, she has just been so kind and so awesome. It seems like she's been here forever, yes. <laughs> the whole time. <laughs> so they had uh, uh, coaches off to a great start. Big win over the weekend, beat Division One Chicago State. So congrats to men's tennis and Coach Hepper. And a big shout-out to Richard Kitchell, who has been leading the pride uh, in the interim, and he has done an amazing job. All right, uh, I got to pay some bills here, Madison, and thank some corporate champions. Uh, Purdue Federal Credit Union, uh, the presenting sponsor of the main event, thank you very much. Uh, Laborers Local 41, uh, Hall of Famer Scott Sparks, big thanks there. Pepsi, Rush Physical Therapy takes great care of our student athletes. MJ Polish Deli, the Kitchell Group at Morgan Stanley. Domino's provides our all of our teams uh, wonderful pizza. Byway Brewing Company, Bridges Scoreboard, Fairfield Inn, Largus Graphics, Hampton Inn and Holiday Inn, where a lot of our visiting teams stay. Right down the road, Kyle Dempsey, a great champion of Purdue Northwest. And Jed TV that will stream over 150 uh, Pride uh, athletic events. Corellis Roofing, NWI, 24-7 ER and Hospital, just south here on Indianapolis Boulevard. Nipsco, a big shout-out to Rick Kalinske. Oh, wow. L.C. Goldberg was the presenting sponsor for our big playoff win uh, a week ago. Thank you, Miller Pizza. Montesol Hudamaki Langles Pizza right down in Highland. Great pizza. People's Bank, North Point Orthopedics, Strack Van Til, Spark Marketing, and South Shore CVA. How about those corporate champions, Madison? Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's talk some stunt now. We have Madison Samples, our new head coach, uh, joins us uh, from Linfield University. You were the cheer coach there. You were a assistant coach at Oregon State and a cheerleader at uh, Oregon State. Uh, so uh, you've just got to be so excited to start the first ever stunt program in the state of Indiana. Yeah, I am just so ecstatic to be here. Um, stunt is just such an incredible emerging uh, sport for women, and it just shows all of the abilities that we've been doing forever in cheer, and it's head-to-head -head competition. Um, yeah, just really bringing, bringing cheer to life with um, – an NCAA sport, and it's absolutely incredible. So a women's sport, uh, we see the, the new billboard that's going to be flying in northwest Indiana, really cool. Uh, a women's sport here at Purdue Northwest. It will advance opportunities for female student athletes. The question I receive all the time, and I'm sure you're gonna, you receive it all the time, Please tell our audience what stunt is. Yeah, absolutely. So stunt is pretty much all of the fundamentals that goes into cheerleading. We stunt, we tumble, we jump, we do pyramids, baskets. Um, there is 36 athletes that are allowed on the floor when we are competing. It is head-to-head -head competition, um, super intense competition. And what's just so incredible about the stunt community is they're all so supportive of each other and just really want to make this sport grow. So big news. You haven't even been here a month. You have four commits. Uh, you've got to be really excited the warm reception that you're receiving in the marketplace. Yes. I mean, if someone had reached out to me about something like this in high school, I would just be blown away. All of these student athletes are just so excited. Cannot wait to learn more about stunt and just see, see what we're going to bring to the table, see what it's all about. So it's an NCAA emerging sport. There's over 60 programs across the country. It's growing really, really fast. Where is stunt? really popular and big yeah it's huge in california there's tons of high school teams and club teams that actually have sport there um, oklahoma is another big one michigan um, kentucky is growing as well and now indiana <laughs> all right love it so take us inside we're showing a little video of stunt uh, partner stunts take us inside there's four quarters Break down the four quarters for us and how that works. Yeah, for sure. Um, so the first quarter is partner stunts. That's going to be a range of one to three partner stunt groups, depending on the routine that you do. 
Um, the second quarter is pyramids and tosses. Again, there's typically about 12 to 15 athletes on the floor for those because it takes a lot of athletes to build a pyramid. Um, and then you have your halftime where your teams get a break. Um, and then third quarter is tumbling and jumps. And then the fourth quarter is everything put together. You have your partner stunts, your pyramids, your tosses, and then your tumbling and jumps all into one routine. And what are the positions on a stunt team? Yeah, so you have your top girl. It's going to be your flyer. Um, and then you have your back spot. And then there are two bases. There's your main base and your side base. And then what's so cool about stunt is you also can have just tumblers and just jumpers to add to the table. We are here with Madison Samples, uh, the stunt coach at Purdue Northwest. If you're interested in stunt, go to pnwathletics.com or call 219-989-2540. Uh, pnwathletics.com, 219-989-2540. Madison, uh, so how many games does a stunt team have in a season? So you have to have eight games to be considered um, using your full season, but typically teams have about 14 to 18 games. And we will um, – you are recruiting now for fall 2024, and our first season of competition will be in spring of 2025. Yes, correct. So it's a spring sport. It starts in February and goes through April. What types of student-athletes are you recruiting? We are looking for talented stunters, talented tumblers, but most importantly, girls that just want to improve, want to work with the team, and just have wonderful attitudes, great personalities, just – can bring everything to um, br start developing an incredible culture and an incredible team. And there's their sports, obviously cheerleading, but there's there other sports that lend themselves to being a good stunt athlete. Yeah, I mean, power lifters um, and then gymnasts, that is a huge part of it. Our tumbling sections, um, obviously cheerleading, um, competitive cheer as well. It doesn't just need to be high school cheer. You can be at an all-star gym too. So yeah, many, many different athletes can come together and make a stunt team. And so this is a scholarship sport. Uh, so there's athletic scholarships available, academic scholarships. Uh, Purdue Northwest is a great value in the marketplace. So um, again, I would imagine that has a lot to do with the warm reception that you're receiving, that you could be a cheerleader in high school and then receive an athletic scholarship to cheer in college. Yeah, it's absolutely incredible. I mean, a lot. there's a lot of um, amazing cheer teams across the nation that just cannot offer scholarships. So that is what is so amazing about stunt is that we can give that opportunity to student athletes. So if you're a, a high school, I'll call spirit cheer or sideline cheer, uh, is stunt something that you could consider? Yeah, absolutely. And if you are interested in continuing your sideline experience, um, you are allowed to do both our sideline team and our stunt team. You just have to um, remember that the practices aren't at the same time so that it is, it is a bigger wor workload, but you can make that work. So take us back in your journey and share. How did you get started? Yeah, I mean, I started gymnastics when I was two years old. My mom was my coach, so she couldn't wait to put me in it. Um, I moved to Oregon when we were four, when I was four years old, and I started cheer at Champion Cheer Athletics. Um, I was there until I was 18 years old, so I cheered for 14 years there, and I started coaching there when I was 15. Um, and then from there, I also did high school cheer as well. Um, and then I went to Oregon State, and I cheered there. I got to be captain my senior year, which was absolutely amazing. Um, after I graduated, my plan was to go to graduate school um, with my degree in molecular biology and biochemistry. I never thought that coaching would be in my future until my head coach asked me to stick around and be the assistant coach and director of recruitment. Um, and yeah, I mean, the rest is history. Got to go to Linfield University and be the head coach there. That was incredible. And yeah, now I'm here and I just could not be more excited. So uh, tell us about what you love so much about cheer and stunt. Uh... Yeah, I mean, there's so much that goes into cheer and stunt that not everybody gets to see. There is hours and hours spent in the cheer gym um, working, pushing those skills since there are so many different categories. You have to be well-versed in your partner stunts, your tumbling, your jumps, your baskets, your pyramids. There's just so much that goes into it, and the stunt community is just I mean, it's so competitive because you're literally going head to head against each other doing the exact same routines, but they're also so supportive of each other. They're cheering each other on from the sidelines. The different teams are cheering each other on, and it is just so awesome to see all these student athletes working for the same goal and being so supportive of each other. 
Well, I can't wait to the first stunt event here in spring 2025. Uh, my colleagues that uh, have stunt at their university say it's so fast-paced, so exciting, and a lot of fun. Yes, definitely. Well, thanks for joining us here today. Good luck on the recruiting trail, and uh, go stunt. Yes, thank you for having me. <laughs> All right. Uh, we'll take a quick break and then have the ice hockey championship coach and student athletes with us. Bensound.com. Bensound.com. Welcome back to PNW Athletics today. I'm the host for the show, Rick Costello, and Director of Athletics. I am joined by Coach Carl Trozine, Craig Herman, Andrew Reamer, and Cooper Olson of our champion uh, GL, CHL, I'm so excited I can't even say it, uh, hockey uh, team. Congrats, guys. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Well, thanks for joining us today. Coach, you still walking on cloud nine? Yeah, no, it's been uh, it's been an awesome couple of days. Um, yeah, no, it's it's still there, still All there. All right, what's the reception been on campus there, Craig? Oh, I mean, people have been super excited. I mean, we've been bringing the thing all around, and people have been really fired up for us. So it's been awesome. How heavy is this uh, piece of hardware there, Andrew? A uh, whole lot lighter after you win it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, so let's uh, do some introductions. We got Cooper Olson, uh, sophomore, uh, engineering major, mechanical engineering from Maple Grove, Minnesota. Cooper, uh, our stat guy, Joey, gave me some stats here. So he told me you had 23 wins this year, which was tied for first in the ACHA. 2.2 goals allowed average, fourth in the ACHA. 
uh, save percentage of 0.936, 939 saves, six shutouts, uh, and 62 saves in the championship game, man. You're the saver. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, that's one way to put it. <laughs> so uh, just uh, incredible performance this year. You've got to be really pleased uh, not only with the performance of yourself but the team. Yeah, the boys have been incredible in front of me. It's it's a lot of fun to go out there and battle for the boys when they're so uh, so supportive of me and just, you know, they bring their A games every day and only – only right that I do the same. 62 saves in one game. Is that like a career high? Um, it's definitely up there. In high school, I, w I didn't have the best high school team in Minnesota, <laughs> so we had a lot of shots. But All right. Uh, yeah, it's up okay. there. Okay, we got Andrew Reamer, uh, captain, uh, 48 points on the season, uh, 17 goals, 31 assists, uh, two goals in the championship game. Uh, you got to be so proud of the pride of Purdue Northwest. Yeah, no, that was an unbelievable experience getting those guys. Obviously, um, you know they've got the they've got the better of us for the past couple of years, and just to be able to get them in a game that big was awesome. The guys really came together, and you know I think we really important, and especially anybody who's in sports knows it's important to get hot at the right time. And we definitely did that. We started playing our best hockey here near the end. So Excellent, excellent. Craig Herman joins us, uh, finance major from Bloomington, Minnesota. Uh, three game winning goals this year, Craig. Uh, and you, are, uh, you have just seen incredible growth in this program on the original team five years ago. Yeah, no, it's, it's been incredible. I mean, every year there's been some sort of progression and uh, – it's all kind of come together at the right time to win something like this. So it's been it's been really special to watch this thing grow since the beginning of it. If we go back to the beginning, we didn't have a, a rank for the first uh, three or four months, and we were traveling all over five different ranks. And uh, right. look at this now: twenty nine yeah. wins on the season. Yeah, no, it, it's it's really special. Like I said, it's seeing the growth has been been crazy for me. I I never really knew if this was going to be something that I would uh, hoist in, in my career here, but, well, it's here now, so. Coach, 50 wins in two seasons, uh, and uh, the team has just gotten better and better under your leadership. Um, it, this must have exceeded your expectations so quickly. Yeah, no, if you would have sat down two years ago and said, what's this look like in two years? Probably not having this conversation, but, again, we'll, uh, we'll take it and run to the bank. You're going to be so proud of these guys. 3.44 GPA, giving back to the community. Uh, tell us about these guys. Yeah, no, I think that's what makes this group special. And I think that's something that when you have this kind of success, you can kind of point to some things along the way that lead you there. And I think that's just kind of the, kind of the character kids we have, and that's these guys. Um, you know, they do give back. They want to give back. That's important to them, right? And then, yeah, the academics, like, we're, they're so good. Um, and taking care of that stuff. So, no, that, that's the stuff that really, really, I mean, the wins are great and all. And we know that. We talk about it a lot. Mm -hmm. But uh, to be able to have all those things in one group, that's, that's what makes this group different. And that's probably why we're having the success that we're having, being honest. Guys, what were your goals coming into the season? Uh, yeah, I think uh, one of them was winning this tournament, if I remember right. Yep. Yeah, it was no, winning this one. Um, you know, getting into the national tournament, making a run. And I, I don't know, if, was our win total 25? 25. That's what 25 I thought, was yeah. the win total goal. And we have blown that out of the water, obviously. And one more to 30, Carl. <laughs> one more to 30. <laughs> uh, so, guys, uh, when did you know that this team was going to be really special? Honestly, for me, it was right from the get-go. Um, just looking at the next recruiting class. Uh, last year was a lot of fun, a lot of new guys, a lot of freshmen on the team. Good leadership, leading the guys and letting them know how, how it rolls here at PNW, and uh, we just brought that into this year. And I mean, what we had maybe two less freshmen incoming this year than we did last year, and you know, it's just it's been a lot of fun teaching those guys, kind of switching shoes with the leaders from last season, and um, you know, a little bit of a rough start to the season, and then you know, you build through that. As long as we got through that, things were good, and we just started rolling right after that. And that's just when we knew it was 
it was really special getting through that adversity. So I took a look at your schedule, prepping for the show, and there was a segment in the fall when uh, we won three out of four against Calvin and Grand Valley. That, to me, had to be a tipping point. That was yeah. the turning point. That was the point where we saw the switch go. Absolutely. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, so have a great fall semester, a tough schedule. Played Adrian twice in that fall semester. Um, and then there's a long break. Christmas comes, winter uh, break. Uh, so uh, how difficult is that for a hockey team to, it's, it's probably what, 30 days? Yeah, we were home for like three to four weeks. Yeah. Yeah. yeah um, you know, especially with, we were rolling at that time. Coming into Christmas break, we were playing some really good hockey. Mm -hmm. um, so I think, you know, before we all went home, it was a stress on, you know, you can't just go home and, do whatever you want, get your mind off the rink, get your mind off the game for a couple of weeks. That, that break definitely did some good, um, but we just really needed to make sure that it wasn't going to be a momentum killer. Um, and, you know, we came back from break and, and kept it going and was able to, able to take, I don't know how many wins down the stretch, nine, nine regular season and then the three playoff games. We, yeah, we came back from break uh, still rolling and, able to take care of business. I think that speaks to the chemistry on the squad yep. to have that long break and then just pick off, pick up right where you left off. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Tell me about the chemistry at this group. Uh, I mean, the chemistry is great on and off the ice. Uh, uh, everyone has guys that they're playing well with right now, especially, and then off the ice, we're all, we're all really close and Really a family, and I think that's that's one of the biggest things with this group is just not a bunch of individuals. It's a it's a real family. There's a couple other guys we should talk about. Uh, junior Sam Bordage had a pretty good season. Coach had a pretty good season. <laughs> yep. yep. So if the stats are correct here, he was uh, 62 points and uh, 27 goals and 35 assists, and that 62 points I think was first in the ACHA. It was scoring leader in the ACHA and. Uh, League MVP. So yeah, no, um, he had an unreal year, and he's just he's a he's a really gifted player, and he's one of the best players in the country when he wants to be. Um, so seeing him kind of turn it on this year and do that was uh, obviously it's a huge huge boost for us to get here. And then we had a rookie of the year, R.J. Swall. Yeah, R.J. came in out of AAA hockey, no junior hockey experience, and you know I'm not gonna lie, when we recruited him, it was. Now you could be end up, you could be end up on the D two team. You could be a D one piece. We're not sure yet, and well, look how that turned out. <laughs> so, uh, Andrew, you said earlier we're peaking at the right time. So, uh, you know, when you think about uh, great fall semester, and we got rolling here towards the end, uh, peaking at the right time, March seventh, one thirty, Indiana University, Pennsylvania national tournament. Yeah, the guys are guys are chomping at the bit. I think the the next couple of weeks is we're gonna have to buckle down and practice, and you know get our systems taken care of, make sure that competes there, get a couple guys back healthy. Um, but I, I think this this group has earned it. We, we have everyone's worked their butts off just to just to get to this point. Um, so I think we got to go make a run. I think that would uh, that would make this group pretty happy. Craig, take us to that championship uh, tournament. Uh, so a dub against Roosevelt at home. Yep. Right? And then we get Calvin again for the second time in a week. Right. And then we beat Adrian. Uh, incredible. Yeah, I mean, just almost just storybook type stuff for myself. I mean, I haven't uh, really had an opportunity to, to win something like this at all in my career. And Going into Calvin, we kind of knew we had their number to this point, and if we just go out there and play our game, then then we should be fine. And then going into Adrian, it was kind of that same message: stick to what we do and and play our play our butts off, and uh, good things are going to happen. And after that second period, we uh, uh, coaching staff just came into the room and uh, told us, "You you win a period, you win a hockey game." And uh, I don't think there was any chance we were losing that hockey game. Win a period, win a hockey game, that's, huh? That's, that's, it was as simple as that. Um, but that being said, that was the best period of hockey I've seen this team play in two years. Um, it just seemed like, for us as a coaching staff, kind of going back over it and talking about it, it's the first time I've seen this team put their foot on the gas mm -hmm. and just say, not, not today. Um, 
And every time, you know, we, we, got, we got the next goal, we got up 3-2, Adrian answers. And, and it, it could have been, okay, here we go. And it wasn't, we went and got the next one. And then we got the next one. It was every time they pushed back, these guys, we pushed harder. And I, I haven't seen that in a game that big from this group. So it's encouraging, right, that all of a sudden you're like, wait a second. We, we went out there against the second best team in the nation. And, and we pushed them around a little bit in the third period. And we pushed back. And, and we came out on top. So, again, it's, it's a little bit of a... A little bit of a building block going forward. Best hockey we've ever played? I think so. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. That's yeah. awesome. That is incredible. Uh, so what, what should we expect in St. Louis, Coach? So, yeah, I mean, now we're to that point. It's one in advance, obviously. Um, you know, you're, how do I put it? You're, you're two wins away from getting down to eight teams left. You're, you're three wins away from a Final Four, and you're five wins away from winning the whole thing. So now it's just... It's one of those things where you know you're just trying to, you gotta try to survive and, and play play again the next day. Um, that being said, I, I really like. We talked yesterday. We really like our draw. We got a, we got a, we got a pretty good draw. So, you know, you're trying to get through those first two games and get down to those eight teams. Mm -hmm. And now you're just in a dogfight the rest of the way because all those teams are really really good. But again, with this group, I mean, if we continue to get the goaltending we're getting, and our power play and penalty kill keep doing what they're doing, we we got a shot. Andrew, what is the message to the Pride fans about March 7th and uh, through to the 12th? Uh, just, well, first, I don't know where the, the viewing will be. Is it Flow Sports? It is Flow Sports. Flow yeah. Sports. So um, if you have Flow Sports, obviously try to get on there and, and watch. Um, March 7th, we're going 1.30. Um, if you're able, obviously come down to St. Louis and come check it out. Um, but yeah, just... Uh, could be, could not be more excited to be to be going into a tournament this big with this group. This has been a, a special year, and big thanks to everybody who supported the team uh, th this past year and these past two years. It's been awesome experience going to the cube for every game, and you know, hearing how loud it gets for games. It's uh, it, it's a special place to be here. Craig Cooper, we're gonna have the state of Minnesota down there. We might. I might have some parents and family coming down for sure. Um, yeah, I don't know. I haven't been to St. Louis. A lot of my family hasn't. I think it's a little trip that will be worth taking. Yeah, I should have some family down there. Mom, dad, a little sister, uh, girlfriend Cordelia as well, I think, and uh, my grandparents, uh, Paul and Shelley. That's awesome. Minnesota, we got a huge representation from the state of Minnesota. We'll have Minnesota people there, I guarantee yeah. it. Yeah. All right. And uh, so... Michigan, is that where most of our players come from? Oh, man, we're pretty spread out. Pretty spread out. Pretty We've spread got out. What, five, or, five or six Michigan fellas, Yeah, I think, and then a bunch of Minnesotans. A bunch of Minnesotans. Yeah. Number of Canadians. Canadians. Number of Canadians. Canadians. Some Canadians. Some Wisconsin in there. Iowa, Texas. All right. Connecticut. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, really. Pretty much everywhere. Colorado. Yeah. Colorado, Alaska. A couple Colorado, right. yeah. Yeah. All right, last words, guys, and we'll let you get to class. Cooper Olson. Uh, just thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in. Go Pride, and uh, yeah, make sure you're wearing your Pride colors for uh, for attorney run here coming up. Awesome, Andrew. Yeah, no, thanks again for for the support from everybody. Um, go Pride, let's go get them. Yeah, no, I think I'll just echo that message. Uh, thank you guys for all your support, and uh, last four years for me have been uh, really special, and it's uh, all because of the uh, the support you guys give us. Uh, go Pride. Coach, you got a great group here. Thank you. I appreciate that. Your last words on the... Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quote Rick Costello. Uh-oh. The best is yet to come. There we go. Hey I love that. There you go. All right. Thanks. That is our GLCHL champion hockey team, and we're so proud of you guys and uh, what you've accomplished in such a short order. It's absolutely amazing, and uh, I agree with you. The best is yet best. to come. Thanks for watching today, and go... Pride.